Hi, my name is Byron Sari. I'm a principal R&D engineer at MTS Systems. So uh, we've developed a new test system. It's for NVH testing of shock absorbers or dampers, and it's a first of its kind. It's specifically engineered to test the chuckle phenomena in a damper. Um, so the damper can emit a couple different types of noise in the uh, NVH sciences. Uh, one noise that it can emit is a swish noise, we call it. A swish noise is an audible noise, and it originates in the shock absorber as an audible noise. So one particular source of a swish sound could be from uh, orifice flow through the orifices in the valve, and swish measurements are measured with microphones. Another type of NVH phenomena is chuckle. Some people may call it uh, rumble or clatter or trunk of lumber. It's got many different names. But fundamentally, the chuckle phenomena is different than the swish phenomena. The chuckle phenomena uh, originates as a mechanical vibration. Somewhere inside the body of the shock absorber, we have a vibration that creates a vibration that transmits up through the body into the uh, damper rod, then up the damper rod into the upper shock mount. And then from the upper shock mount, it can then vibrate other components in that region, which then can create uh, audible noise. So the uh, primary uh, measurement made for chuckle type testing in a load frame is an accelerometer, since the chuckle is a mechanical vibration at the origin. So today with uh, electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles, there's more of a demand on the NVH, noise vibration harshness, characteristics of a shock absorber. This is because the uh, noise of the engine has gone down because we've transitioned from electric vehicles from the internal combustion engine. So the electric vehicles have less noise coming out of the engine. So we uh, are now more noticing the damper noise. Also, the newer vehicles have very good uh, aerodynamic characteristics, so wind noise is also reduced. Now, also with the electric vehicles, we have uh, heavier vehicles, so the heavier vehicles require higher damping in the shock absorber, which makes it even more difficult to uh, negate this chuckle phenomena. Um, also, there's more of a concentration in handling and comfort on our new cars due to the autonomous vehicles. So with the, uh, with the new type of testing in the chuckle region, we have a different frequency that we are addressing. Um, in the traditional conventional damper testing, we're limited to 50 hertz primarily because the wheel hop resonant frequency of the spindle mass on the tire stiffness is usually in the range of 14 hertz to 17 hertz. So by the time we get up to 30 hertz, we're attenuated quite a bit. So usually that's the limit of the upper frequency bound of conventional damper testing of the past. Um, we've also had acoustic testing that's been successfully done for many years. Also, that's that swish type of phenomena I discussed earlier. And those type of measurements are up in the uh, two kilohertz, 200 hertz, all the way up to 20 kilohertz. So those type of uh, frequencies are much higher than what we're talking about when we talk about chuckle. So chuckle is in between that in-between region between the conventional damper, damper testing and this acoustic region. And this region hasn't been uh, well uh, designed into a standard damper test system because it was the standard damper testing was limited to that 30, 50 hertz region. So now with this uh, chuckle type testing, um, since the road excitation typically doesn't have content up beyond 50 hertz, the excitation for these chuckle type tests is limited to 50 hertz. But since the chuckle phenomena is a higher frequency vibration, mechanical vibration, that can be as high as 800 hertz, 1000 hertz, we need to make accurate measurements all the way up to 800 hertz or 1000 hertz with this system. So this new system that we've developed can achieve accurate measurements up to 800 hertz. And with shorter specimens, it can even go higher than 800 hertz. So in a chuckle test, the typical test excitations would be road data, again, less than 50 hertz, or random noise, or uh, discrete sinusoids. And these excitations, we want to have very good fidelity 
because we don't want to have uh, in these excitations higher frequencies emitted from the test bench itself. Because if the, the test system emits higher frequencies, we can't discern the frequencies coming from the actuator rod or the frequencies coming from the shock absorber. Also, the measurement for these systems, as I mentioned earlier, is up to 800 hertz on our system. So to achieve these higher frequency measurements, we use different types of transducer technology. Accelerometers are often used. The accelerometers are placed on the top of the damper rod. And we have a picture here of an accelerometer attached to the top of the damper rod with the damper rod elastically isolated with the upper shock mount. This allows the damper rod to vibrate freely under the chuckle type force disturbance. Some of the analysis done in the past is to look at the auto spectral density of the accelerometer, um, which I've shown here in a plot. The uh, spectrum of the accelerometer is, has been shown to have a good correlation to chuckle. So if they have a, a chuckle problem on a particular damper, uh, measuring the accelerometer spectrum often can show that chuckle problem in the data on the test bench. Some other methods used to correlate to chuckle on the test bench when chuckle is known to be a problem in a particular shock absorber is to look at the double derivative of the force. That one doesn't have as much of a, a natural correlation as to why, a physical correlation as to why that correlates to a chuckle problem. I particularly think it's because it's just another form of acceleration, the double derivative of the force. So the force itself seems to be the more natural spectrum to analyze for chuckle. But in the past, in damper systems, the force measurement isn't a high bandwidth transducer. So that's something I'll talk about more with respect to the new NVH damper system. So with the new NVH damper system, we put in a high fidelity actuation. We've used a linear electric actuation on this system, which MTS has uh, put linear electric actuators into many of our systems for many years. So the linear electric actuator allows us to get high fidelity input. We've also put in uh, a very large stiff load frame. This is a attribute that we've learned through our elastomer testing uh, technologies to be very critical for high frequency measurements. We've also put in high bandwidth transducers. So for the force measurement, for instance, we use acceleration compensation on the force measurement, which is a, a feature that we use on all of our elastomer test systems. Our elastomer test systems uh, is a test system that could measure uh, bushing frequency response or uh, motor mount frequency response. So these test, uh, test systems that MTS has made for many years and is uh, the leader in this technology uh, has a bandwidth up to 1,000 hertz. So there we can do our excitation to 1,000 hertz as well as accurate measurements. So again, the uh, low total harmonic distortion or the low distortion, I should say, in the actuator is why we picked the electric actuator. And I'll also show some uh, total harmonic distortion measurements. So that's a measure of how little distortion there is in the actual signal. Also in this new system, we've integrated in um, high bandwidth control loops. So we've used some advanced technology in our controls as well to get high uh, frequency response out of our control loops as well as high frequency external disturbance rejection, which is very important when you're testing with an electric actuator and a uh, very stiff damper. So with respect to the excitation, here are some plots of the, uh, the harmonic distortion. Um, I've got a table here of some tests that I ran at 7 hertz, 25 hertz, 75 hertz, 100 hertz, and 200 hertz. So at different amplitudes, we can see that the uh, total harmonic distortion is very low. So uh, typically, if your total harmonic distortion is less than 1%, that's, that's uh, very, very good, and you can barely see the disturbance on the wave shapes. So to put that in perspective, I've plotted here the uh, 75 hertz response. The 75 hertz response has a 0.67 total harmonic distortion, as can see, be seen on the table. And in the time traces, you can barely discern the difference between the perfect sinusoid and the sinusoid measured on the machine. So on the lower graph there, I've zoomed up into the lower left-hand corner of one of the sinusoidal valleys, 
And there you can see that, in fact, there is two signals, but a very small difference. So the total harmonic distortion is very good on this system, less than 1%, up to 200 hertz. Also, as I had mentioned before, the system has very high bandwidth, meaning that in closed loop, real-time closed loop control, we can get uh, to very high frequencies with the actuator through our advanced controls. So here's a plot of the closed loop transfer function, and the dot there represents the 0.707 point, or 3 dB down, and that point is at 150 hertz. So that's a very high bandwidth. That bandwidth is unheard of in hydraulic systems. Hydraulic systems have oil column resonances, which prevent you from turning up the gain high enough to achieve this type of bandwidth. But the electric actuation allows us to have this excellent performance. Also, as a result of the high bandwidth, we have very good real-time tracking. So this uh, plot I've shown here is the real-time um, control of a road profile. This particular road profile has 50 hertz content, the uh, auto spectrum of this road profile. And you can see where it, the amplitude drops off drastically at 50 hertz. That was because it was ran through some low-pass filters. But I'd like to point out how good this tracking is to this 50 hertz content. So uh, once again, it's very hard to discern the command from the uh, displacement feedback. They're right on top of each other. This is unheard of for typical damper test systems. Uh, when I say typical, I mean hydraulic actuation. Um, and even linear electric systems, uh, that the standard linear electric systems do not have this good of tracking. So with this good of real-time tracking, iterations are not necessary for uh, typical road profiles up to 50 hertz. So that's another advantage of this system, real-time tracking without iterations. One of the attributes of our new NVH damper system is the high stiffness load frame. The high stiffness load frame is an enabler to this type of testing because the high stiffness load frame results in a high frequency box mode. And the box mode is particularly uh, influential on the data, the force data specifically, because the box mode is in the axis of the measurement itself. So we can see the box mode animated here on the right-hand side and in the center picture. This animation is uh, both an FEA animation as well as an experimental modal analysis, which is measured with real data, real accelerometers on the actually as-built system. So the box mode shape, as you can see here, the uh, crosshead is bouncing quite a bit in this mode shape. And this bouncing of the crosshead causes vibrations into the force transducer, which can disrupt the data at this box mode resonant frequency. So this box mode resonant frequency, our goal was to have it greater than 800 hertz. Uh, FEA predicted that we would have an 870 hertz resonance. And experimental mode showed that we achieved that and even higher at 924 hertz. In this, uh, to get this high box mode, MTS has implemented a patented cross beam uh, feature. This cross beam increases the box mode to a much higher frequency than a standard test system would be without this cross beam. And this cross beam is MTS patented, so you can only get it from MTS. This uh, type of frequency in a damper test system is really unheard of. Now we achieve these type of frequencies in our elastomer test systems, which shown on the lower left, but in elastomer test system, the crosshead cannot go up as high to enable us to test a, da a damper. So a uh, elastomer test system is primarily made for testing motor mounts, which are very small compared to a damper. So to achieve this high box mode, along with the ability to test such a tall specimen, was quite a challenge. So uh, here I'd like to show some data of the accelerometer. I had mentioned earlier that for chuckle testing, we often put in an accelerometer on the top of the damper rod. You can see that in the picture in the lower left-hand corner. So what I'm showing here in these auto spectral densities or power spectral densities is the acceleration of that uh, accelerometer when we are testing with a real damper. So with the damper is the black trace. Also. The, uh, the same measurement with the damper removed, that's the blue trace. And the uh, significance of these two traces is the blue trace represents the background noise, and the black, black trace rep represents the measurement autospectral density. 
So we can see that the influence of that box mode at 924 hertz starts to come into play um, only up at the 924 hertz and frequencies below that we don't see an appreciable uh, signal to noise ratio if you will from the real measurement compared to the background noise. Now keep in mind that this is a logarithmic plot on the vertical axis so when we have a division between the blue line and the black line that means we have a factor of 10. So the signal itself is 10 times stronger than the background noise. So the Disturbance from the box mode is the first uh, mode that's going to disturb these measurements, and that's the significance of this plot. Also, this plot here is of the damper force itself. This is a force measurement with its same type of setup, with and without the damper. Here, too, we see that the data has at least a decade between the measurement and the background noise until we reach that box mode at 924 hertz. Also, something we've included in this system is high bandwidth transducers. So we're using technology in our transducers that is uh, the same type of technology we use in our elastomer test systems. So in an elastomer test system, we would put accelerometer on the actuator rod. So we don't do this on a normal damper system, but we do this on our elastomer systems. And we've also incorporated that into this new NVH damper system. Also, we use accelerometers on our uh, load cell to take out the inertial air. We call it acceleration compensation. This is not applied on traditional damper systems, but we've applied it on this high bandwidth NVH system. We also use load washer technology. That's a piezoelectric technology that we use to be able to see uh, small signals, small force signals at very high frequencies. We've also incorporated that into this system we piggyback the load washer on top of the load cell. So in this system, we have also integrated some um, digital filters so that we can combine our high frequency transducers and our low frequency transducers. So like I had mentioned earlier, in elastomer testing, we use two different types of displacement measurements. One is a um, LVDT or an encoder as our low frequency measurement. And then at high frequencies, we switch over to an accelerometer. So the accelerometer directly isn't a displacement measurement, which is what we ultimately desire, but it's an acceleration. So we, through a digital filter, we can transform that into a displacement by taking the double integration of that signal. So on this system, on the NVH damper system, we've taken one additional step and we've combined these two signals real time and the uh, displacement estimator can give you a combined sensor fusion type of signal uh, real time, right out of your real time scopes, right into your data. And it does this combination of these two signals through a complementary filter automatically on the fly real time. So these auto spectral densities over on the right, we can see how the uh, signal from the estimator transitions at low frequencies from the encoder-derived displacement, and then at high frequencies, it transitions over to the accelerometer-derived displacement. Similarly, in our force measurement, we have a force estimator. The force estimator also combines two different transducers, our low-frequency load cell transducer, and then at high frequencies, we use a load washer. There, too, we use an online digital filter so that we have a real-time force estimation uh, that you can see real time on your real time scopes as well as record in your data. So we can see the transition at high frequencies from the load cell to the load washer. And here's a zoomed uh, close up of that transition in the auto spectral densities from the low frequency transducer, load cell, to the high frequency transducer, the load washer. Also, I mentioned earlier that we use acceleration compensation to compensate for the inertial error. The inertial error up at the uh, 1,000 hertz or 800 hertz or even 500 hertz is quite significant. We can see in this auto spectral density in the, on the right side that uh, around 450 hertz, you can see the deviation, uh, significant deviation between a inertially compensated transducer and a non-inertially compensated transducer. Again, this is logarithmic on the y-axis, so that uh, 
that's a, um, where we see a division between the two, that's a power of 10. So a significant deviation of the two signals. So this system, since it is used for NVH, though it's primarily designed for the vibration characteristics, the chuckle characteristics of the NVH type testing, it can also do the swish type testing or the acoustic type testing. So the, uh, the swish type testing uses a acoustic chamber that we can roll in and out of place for the acoustic tests. We also can put some uh, padding on the inside of the load frame to reduce some of the reverberation inside the load frame. And here's some real data from our systems for uh, three specific tests. Uh, a 0.3 meter per second test, a 0.8 meter per second test, and a one meter per second test. And these uh, specific tests come from uh, one of the European OEMs. And the uh, goal for these tests was to achieve 37 dBA, or between 37 to 30, 43 dBA for the 0.3 and the 0.8 meter per second test. Those particular tests allowed for a band width or a band pass filter on the data. And you can see in the actual SPL uh, row or column that we greatly, uh, we greatly achieved the 0.3 meter per second test with the 33.8 dBA. And then we were successful on the 0.8 meter per second test with the 36.2 dBA. We were also within our bounds for the uh, one meter per second test, which was 40.5 dBA, whereas our spec was 46 dBA. And for that one meter per second test, it was full spectrum. There was no band pass filter on that data. And all this data was taken with a background noise of 74.6 dBA, so a very loud background. So this background is outside of the chamber in the lab itself. So we can also do elastomer testing on this system since it has all the attributes of one of our elastomer test systems. High bandwidth transducers, high resonant frequency load frame. And here is a plot of uh, testing with one of our dynamic standards. That's the standard we use to measure the accuracy of our elastomer systems. And our red lines here are the upper and lower specification of our plus or minus 5% on K-STAR, which is our MTS specification. And we are well within those bounds up to 400 hertz. Also on the right is our plus or minus a half a degree of phase, which is our MTS specification on phase which is well within the bounds up to 400 hertz. So in conclusion, our new NVH damper system has electric actuation and high control bandwidth in the control system itself to allow us to excite only the frequencies that are in our road profile and not to bring in any higher frequency unwanted uh, excitations. This allows us to measure only the higher frequency noise being emitted from the shock absorber itself. We also have a stiff load frame and a high frequency box mode so that we do not disrupt the force uh, measurement with resonances within the frame itself. We also have high bandwidth transducers which allow us to measure the uh, signature coming from the shock absorber up to 800 hertz. So with these attributes in mind, MTS has developed the new NVH damper system. It's a first of its kind. It has all the good attributes to measure the chuckle phenomena in the load frame as well as can measure swish noise. It can also be used for elastomer type testing up to 400 hertz. And it can be used for traditional damper testing as well. And we can also evaluate models in the loop with this system, which is another product that MTS provides. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.